This is Dr. Clayton Lane. In this video, I'll be discussing osteonecrosis of the shoulder and a bone sparing approach to total shoulder arthroplasty in a young patient. First of all, what is osteonecrosis? Basically, it's a disruption of the blood supply to bone, usually in a joint. The disruption of blood supply leads to increased pressure. The increased pressure worsens the loss of blood supply, and ultimately you get this cycle that leads to bone death. The earlier stages where the bone has not collapsed can be treated with PRP, stem cells, core decompression, etc. The later stages where there's loss of bone and bone collapse in the joint need to be treated with a shoulder replacement. What causes the osteonecrosis? Well, we still don't know. We do know some things that place you directly at risk. Trauma places you at risk, radiation, chemotherapy. Also, some modifiable risk factors such as alcohol abuse, corticosteroid use, and tobacco use. Our case example is a 45-year-old female first noticed pain while pulling herself up on a wall during a mud run. The pain got progressively worse over four months so that she couldn't work out or lift weights anymore. Here on x-ray, you can see a little bit of an abnormality. There's a cloudy, ovoid uh, mass here on the humerus. Still though, you can't really tell that much is wrong with the shape of the humerus on this x-ray. However, the MRI shows the whole story. Here we can see that her rotator cuff is okay, but here the ball of the shoulder or the humeral head, you can see the contour is disrupted and flattened where the bone has collapsed in. And this makes a square peg in a round hole, so to speak, so that when she turns her shoulder, there's popping and catching in pain. Here you can see a view from above where that collapse has occurred between the two arrows, as well as some cystic changes, and then on another view, more cystic changes, bone collapse, and abnormality. So for her, we opted for a stimulus type shoulder replacement. The standard shoulder replacement on the left here takes away more bone because you put a stem down the humerus and you have a larger glenoid implant. The stemless shoulder replacement shown here is more of a resurfacing of the humeral head and then a small button is placed on the cup or the glenoid. So here we have her in the operating room. We've exposed the humeral head. Here you can see the area of osteonecrosis where the ball of the shoulder has flattened and collapsed. The uh, bone abnormality actually goes deeper than this as you saw in the MRI, but here you can see how that's going to be very painful as she tries to move her shoulder, especially with her activities. So we size up the humerus and then began reshaping the humerus and removing abnormal bone. And we actually removed all the way to about this level where we removed all this abnormal bone which you can still see here. Next we're going to turn our attention to the cup of the shoulder. Because we're replacing her humerus or resurfacing her humerus with metal, we want to give the uh, cup or glenoid some support. So what we do is ream a small area in the middle of the cup of the shoulder and place a essentially plastic button to help support the contact loads of the new shoulder replacement. That's an ultra high molecular weight polyethylene plastic that we use in all types of shoulder replacements, knee replacements, hip replacements, etc. And then finally we go back and resurface the humeral head. Uh, this particular implant um, restores the anatomy more than most shoulder replacements. The humeral head is actually an oval. It's taller than it is wide anterior posterior. So uh, for this implant we're able to perfectly match that to her anatomy which is going to help her in the long run as far as the mobility of the shoulder and the natural feel. Here's her post-operative x-rays. You can see the incisions about three inches long. That's a pretty typical incision for this procedure. And here she is at her six-week follow-up. She has full active forward flexion, as you can see there. She has full strength of her supraspinatus tendon, her infraspinatus tendon. She has symmetric internal and external rotation to the opposite extremity, and she's very pleased with the results. So in summary, osteonecrosis is bone death that occurs for unclear reasons. It leads to a rapid destruction of the joint at an early age. Early stages may respond to decompression, calcium phosphate, grafting, PRP, and stem cells. Shoulder surfing, surfacing, though, is a good option for patients with bone collapse. Thank you.